Today we're going to do, I guess what I would consider a deep dive into alternating current. And in particular, we're going to talk about the importance of having a true RMS meter or any kind of true RMS instrument when you're dealing with alternating current. I have a whole bunch of stuff in front of me and we'll get to talking about that. The very first thing we need to do if we're going to talk about alternating current is talk about the sine wave or the waveform. And um, as we know, or, or most of us know, alternating current changes directions at regular intervals. And so uh, in a moment here, you should see on your screen a sine wave. And let's talk a little bit about just the sine wave. And you'll see we've got a horizontal line and the horizontal line represents zero on the measured quantity, whether that be voltage or current. And then it also represents time starting here at your left and extending to the right represents time. So let's take a look at the sine wave. If you look at it, it starts at zero, it rises up, goes up to a peak and drops back down. That represents a positive alternation. At the point it reaches that line again, it's a value of zero and it starts off going on the bottom and develops the second half of the alternation or a second alternation on the negative side and it does the very same thing. It, really, it rises up and then comes back down or up to the line again. And that's so you have a positive and a negative alternation. And that's exactly how alternating current, both voltage and the current work. The current reverses direction and the voltage basically changes polarity. I'm going to repeat what I just said because it, uh, it it's, bears repeating. And on the screen now, you should see the sine wave with a bunch of values on it, and that's what we want to talk about it. So remember, the horizontal line represents uh, time, and it also represents zero. The top half or alternation is positive, the bottom alternation is negative, and the wave amplitude, in other words, the height, represents the value of whatever we're looking at, whether it be voltage or whether it be current. The values uh, for value and current are referenced from the waveform peak. And if you look, you can see we have peak to peak shown on the drawing. And what I mean by the reference, they're referenced from that, if you look, you see you'll have an average value of 6.37 of the peak. And then you also have where it shows RMS or root mean square value of 0.707 of peak. Sometimes you might see that listed as the RMS value being uh, or excuse me, peak being uh, 1.414 of the RMS value. You might see either way, but it really represents the same thing. The RMS values are calculated by taking the square root of the average of the squared values of the sine waveform over a complete cycle. And we don't have to get lost in that, but that is the way they calculate it. RMS values are sometimes called the effective voltage values and current values also. RMS values produce the same heat in a purely resistive load as a DC voltage and current of the same value. So that's how we equate them to a DC circuit. So the RMS values are the, the equivalent of a DC circuit of the same voltage is one way to think about it. And uh, RMS values are used to describe our nominal voltages, which is voltage in name only. If I say a 120 volt circuit or a 240 volt circuit or 277 or whatever I'm saying, that is the RMS value of it. And looking at the waveform, one thing to always remember, if we were looking at this circuit and it was a 120 volt circuit, 120 volts would be at the RMS value, but the peak of the sine wave would be 170 volts. The next thing we need to do now is take a look at our lab setup. We've got a whole bunch of good stuff here. The first thing we need to look at is this. It's, it's a Fluke 43B power quality meter which allows us to look at the sine wave. And that's exactly what we want to do today. We want to look at the sine wave so we can kind of uh, analyze what happens when you change the sine wave and, and why true RMS meters are so important. The next thing we have is a South Wire digital multimeter. And I have to read the name of this one. It's a 10030S meter. And then the, I, the next one is a Fluke 117. And we'll be using all of those and I have them hooked into the circuit right here, and they come back to a receptacle on this, this lamp, and then the, I have a, an incandescent bulb in this lamp, and it's all powered through a dimmer. 
and uh, we're going to see what happens when we use the dimmer, and we'll talk about that here for just a second. I don't want to get too lost in, in the weeds on this, but we do need to talk about a dimmer and how it works. This particular dimmer has a triac in it, which is a solid state device used to control the circuit. And essentially, when I use this dimmer, you'll watch the light come on, and you can watch it ramp down again, and you can see it's changing the value of the current, it's changing the, the intensity of the light. And the way it does it, it's actually altering the sine wave, and I'll show you how in a minute. But the bottom line is, as I turn this thing up higher and higher, I'm adjusting when the, the dimmer allows the sine wave to start kicking out voltage. And so it actually triggers it. And so if I go higher, it, it, it triggers at a higher and higher, or excuse me, earlier, earlier in the sine wave. And so it gives you more and more of the sine wave. So basically, when I go down on this thing, I'm shrinking how much of the sine wave that I'm actually allowing through it. It's a very simple device, and it really, like I say, it changes the sine wave, and it makes it into what's basically a sharp shark's fin appearance. And so we'll talk about that again when we do the lab itself, but understand it really is that simple. We're altering the sine wave with this, and by changing the sine wave, the smaller, uh, uh, the smaller amount I let in through this in the sine wave, the, the lower the voltage value, value and the lower the current values. I am off screen right now. I just wanted to do a, a quick little look at our lab. And before we look at what a dimmer does, I wanted to show a pure sine wave as it exists before you put it through a dimmer. And to do that, I have the test leads from the, the Fluke power quality meter inserted into a, a strip here, a, a, an outlet strip, which I will turn on in a moment. And then uh, we'll take a look at the sine wave on the screen of the power quality meter once I turn it on, and then we're gonna go off screen, we'll set up to do the dimmer itself. We've tightened up our shot on the Fluke power quality meter, and you can see I have a little bit of a sine wave going on there, and I think it's really just a ghost voltage that's giving us that. I'm going to turn on the power strip now, and now you can see we have a full sine wave developed. You can actually see it. It's a pretty clean looking sine wave, and you'll see it's telling us that we have a voltage of 121.9 volts, and we're at 60 hertz. We're also seeing that. So that is what the sine wave that comes into my house looks like, and that's what we would consider a pure sine wave. We left our camera tightened up on the power quality meter, and I, I brought the dimmer up front here, and I now have everything connected to the dimmer again so we can see what happens to the voltage when I operate the dimmer. So right now, we're showing nothing, but as I turn this thing on, you'll see we get a little shark fin appearing because the triac is not letting the sine wave through until I, I give it a, a trigger voltage. And so I keep going up higher and higher, and the shark wave increases, increases in size. You can see that. It gets bigger and bigger, and more of the sine waves goes through. And then we finally get all the way to the top, and you'll notice something really interesting. Even all the way turned on with the dimmer, we've still lost some through the solid state, and we don't have a pure sine wave. But you can see it goes back down to shark fin when I dim it. And that's as simple as it is for how a dimmer works. In a moment, we're going to uh, pull away here, and we're going to look at two other, the two other meters while we do the same thing. You'll see something really interesting about that. We now have all three of our test instruments connected to our dimmer circuit, and I'm going to operate the dimmer, and we'll see what happens as we ramp the dimmer up and down to the voltage on each of these instruments. So I'll start now, and we'll go up a little bit. And if you look, you should see 48, or 49 volts on the Fluke power quality meter, and you can see I've got the shark fin. And then the south wire is showing 24, but the Fluke 117 is also showing 49. So the two Fluke meters show the same voltage. And if I ramp up more, I go all the way to the top, and you can see I'm showing 115 volts on the Fluke, 114.9, now it's 115 on the 117, but the south wire's down at 103. And you'll also notice, again, that we're not getting the full voltage because the dimmer does eat up a little bit of voltage, but the, the measurements are different on those. And let's go back halfway down, and you can see we are at, we'll go about halfway, let's go to 75 volts on the Fluke power quality meter with the shark fin, and then here on the 117, we're showing 75, but on the south wire, we're showing 47. And so the question is, why is that? And the answer is pretty simple. The two Fluke 
meters are both true RMS meters, and they simply sample more of the sine wave more often and will give an accurate measurement even when you have altered sine waves. The south wire meter is what's called an averaging meter, and it does not sample the sine wave in the same way, and it will not give you an accurate measurement when you're dealing with any kind of an altered sine wave. And there are lots of things in the electrical world that do alter the sine wave, so we have lots of problems with that at times. So if you're working with AC circuits, which may have some kind of uh, poor sine wave or some that's one that's manipulated on purpose, you need a, a true RMS meter to get both current and voltage measurements accurately. Thanks for watching. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and check out the links we have below. Come back for new videos. We should be adding content each week. And finally, visit the Taking Measure website.